I tell you, some people find <laughs> some people find this way of eating kind of expensive, um, and they need some tips. So, what do you think? Yeah, I think that's a really valid one, and um, you know, it's just unfortunate that we've been um, so we've been created to 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 make money and spend everything we make on things we don't need. And the things we really do need are suddenly a luxury or suddenly cost too much. It's like saying, well, you know, go out and get all this stuff, but, you know, but air, air is kind of expensive, water is kind of expensive, so, you know, that should just be, uh, you know, tertiary expense. You know, that's, if, that's really how great this the whole setup is. Um, so, but, you know, so on the one hand, I'd say start to take a look at everything that you're programmed to buy and... Um, you know, you, you'll probably have some revelations there. Um, as you do that, you'll be surprised. Um, one will be surprised to see that it's not any more expensive to live this way if you don't want it to be. So, um, the, the one of the things that comes up often is that the um, it's not. I think people are aware now that organic foods, or organic produce, doesn't need to be significantly more expensive than mainstream produce. Um, and where that's concerned, that's great news, especially because mainstream produce with GMOs is just such a hazard to everyone's health. I mean, it's a, you basically, not to be too crude here, but you're like eating tumors. You, you see the, the, um, the lab rats that come out of these studies, the Monsanto lab rats, I mean, they have just every orifice and every gland in their body is exploding with tumors. So we have to really confront the fact that the GMO food is, I mean, it should just have a poison warning label on it. Treat it like you would treat the worst possible poison, you know. Um, so that's, that's one thing. Um, so celebrate the fact that there's not a huge difference in that. Um, and if you can eat seasonally, uh, for example, right now we have, you know, apples, grapefruits, oranges, bananas, uh, well, bananas are pretty much always in season, right? But, uh, but, but winter fruits are totally inexpensive. Um, you know, if you want to have organic pineapple in February, then it may get a bit pricey. But if we're talking about having locally grown, organically grown apples, um, greens, if you can get locally grown organic greens, um, they, they, those things shouldn't be that expensive. Um, and, you know, eating in, if there are foods that really fill you up, like, um, you know, yams, sweet potatoes, de um, dense in a good way. It's I don't often say that, but they're filling. They're comfort foods, and they're really inexpensive. Um, also, millet, quinoa, buckwheat. Those um, those grains that we you know have a, have a place in this lifestyle long term. Those are not expensive. Um, the only gets expensive when you start playing around with the raw food treats, the packaged foods, and that's really not what raw food and cleansing was ever meant to be about. It makes, um, for people who, um, who really enjoy um, an almost entirely raw diet or almost entirely raw meals or entirely raw meals, they can finish off and complete a meal really nicely, but they're meant to be eaten with a big raw leafy green salad. They shouldn't, there shouldn't be a, a big... Um, there shouldn't be a lot of intake of this stuff, and if it's if it's gourmet, if it's you know coming from, um, if it's expen ex if it's expensive to make and produce and sell, um, it's going to be expensive to buy. But if you want to take the raw ingredients and make versions of your own, it, it's going to be so inexpensive. I mean, the raw ingredients like loose raw organic nuts and dates and um, I don't know, even spices. Yeah, spices, or if you're doing um, sprouted grains, if you're getting like buckwheat groats, these things are really cheap. I mean, the simpler, the mistake is to overcomplicate it. If you're going in the right direction, your your intake is getting simpler. It's not getting more ornate. Um, and if the, and the simpler the combinations of foods, the simpler the origin of the food. Uh, the less ornate, the easier it's going to be to move through the body, the more quick exit it's going to be. So really, the if you're on a budget, you can use your budget to keep um, your diet in check in a really positive way. You can say, well, look, I'm on a budget. Here are all the inexpensive foods. They're very, very simple. 
if I have greens and tomatoes, lemons, a head of broccoli, a couple of yams, you know, a stick of organic butter, not in the, the meal, but like a little stick, a little <laughs> pat of organic butter in your baked um, yams, you've just had something so simple, so cleansing, so perfect for almost any transition level. And you're done. That's it. Super simple ingredients. Um, you know, if you, if you decide that you want to have the, you know, raw blueberry cheesecake from the high-end raw store and the, you know, special spice flaxseed crackers from that same store and then, you know, you, you, you want to, there, there are plenty of things you can do to rack up your bill. It doesn't have to be that way. You know, maybe you want to get yourself a job at one of these stores. <laughs> maybe you'll get a discount. Um, but, and, and also if you, you know, go into things with friends, co-ops, there's so many ways around that. Um, and then what you'll also hopefully find is as your being um, is elevated, you have way fewer needs. And that's a great indication that you're going in the right direction. So, for example, you, you don't have the same needs to possess maybe so many items of clothing or um, you don't feel the need to keep up with the Kardashians. You know, it, it suddenly your life becomes less expensive at large and you start to, you value the time that you put into something. So if you're spending your life force working in an office or in a factory or wherever, you know, life takes you, wherever you, you earn your income, then you might value that um, more than you did before. You might not want to go and, and spend that on things that aren't going to either recharge you or in some way improve your life. If it's just about keeping up with stuff and creating more debt, and then you're just being drawn into the um, into the um, what's it called the quicksand, even more quickly and, and deeply, and you you know you want to get out of that. And you can think about it as um, investing in your actual health care, which is your health insurance being your alkaline reserve, so you don't have to be paying for insurance you can just be inputting alkaline foods into your reserve which is actually gonna save you if you do come across something yeah I think if, if some future of, of health insurance should be you know if you if something happens from the outside like you get hit by a car or you know something big happens like that from the external that um, you can have health insurance just for that but you know yeah so, someone like myself I mean I I don't, I wouldn't, I'm not interested in going to see doctors even if something were to go wrong, but something goes wrong anyway. So, um, you know, it's, it's a really, um, the future of healthcare could be, should be different for everyone eventually as things start to evolve, but certainly can be different to everyone, you know, who's in this walk of life because, um, you know, it's, you are, you're guaranteeing. If you balance your systems, if you restore order to the chaos in your body, Symptoms only come up, symptoms which then become disease, you know, and, and um, more intense, more acute diseases, only surface, only manifest in a system that's lacking balance. If there's balance and harmony, then you're, you're guaranteed success. Now, if you're balanced and, harmony, balanced and harmonious but living in an environment that isn't, you'll still be affected by that. So you, you can't um, count yourself out completely. Um, that nothing will go wrong in your system, but the other question becomes, well, do how would you want to manage it if it were to happen? So if, you know, if you do the best you can to clean up your, you know, what's already there, you acknowledge your lineage um, and things that could manifest from lineage and from the, um, and from the environmental kind of, um, you know, the problem that we're all living with, which is the, the pollution, the radiation, um, if something were to go wrong, how would, you know, how would you want to manage that? And, you know, someone like me, I would never have a mammogram. I would never, there's so many things I would never do. The people are like, oh, I would never have a colonoscopy. I mean, you're setting yourself up. Now, if you're living normally, chances of, of getting um, malignant tumors and having all kinds of problems are high. So if, if you're set up for that, then, you know, you probably want to do things the way they're, um, you're, you're directed to do things. It doesn't mean you're 
prognosis is going to be any better. It doesn't mean you're going to have any more um, comfortable, happy, healthy life. It just means that 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 these are the steps that lead in that direction, and that's the world you'll have to live with. Um, you know, if if you don't, if you if you see the folly in that, and not not to say that you're you know anything's wrong with you if you don't. If you are one of those people though who sees the folly in that, you can create a different path for yourself, and um, you know, and and be willing. I don't. Th I think everyone should be willing. And not, it should not be so afraid of death. I think the fear of death and the fear of uh, grave illness is, um, is one of those things that keeps us um, on a really um, a short tether, it keeps us from our freedom. And if we can release that fear, knowing that at some point we're all going to physically perish, um, that um, there... But you're more likely to make wise decisions about your health and your health care. You know, what, one of the things I always try to keep in mind myself is at every decision I make, am I making a decision out of fear or am I making a decision out of love? And if I'm making a decision out of fear, stop immediately and, and reassess. Get into a place of love and safety and protection, um, a, sense, a sense of love, safety, and protection. Um, love, praise, and gratitude, maybe better, um, better, higher frequency words to use, and then reconsider the situation. Right. And you can also think about it energetically, because if your focus is always on death and illness, you're going to be pulling those kinds of things towards you. You're going to be attracting that. And that's just not where you want your focus to be going. Yeah, yeah it's true. If you can authentically let go of that, you'll be in really good shape. You will, um, you'll, your, your cells, your org field around you, everything will pulsate with whatever you put your mind on. As on a, it's, it's such, such an important, smart point that you brought, you brought up. And, um, and if you can create that field, you're, you're not going, it's impossible for those things to touch you, those negative things to touch you. By contrast, you can easily attract them to yourself by focusing on them. Right. Or even giving them power. Even even if you don't focus on them day and night, if you still think they loom large out there, you know, somewhere, and you want to avoid them, it, it brings to another point. Instead of running from something, run to something else. So, you know, if you're going to turn your back on medicine and or modern medicine and the Goliath of uh, hospitals and um, the, whole, the whole industry, don't turn your back because you're afraid of it because you're running from it. Turn your back because you're looking at something else entirely. You're, you're, you're running towards something. You're, you're cultivating something completely different. And so that doesn't have your, your attention anymore. doesn't have your interest. It's not being fed your energy. You're suddenly now focused on cultivating something really beautiful. Hopefully that's enough incentive for everyone to find a way to buy their organic veggies. <laughs>